Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith, and this is the Angus Wall feature in Adobe Premiere Pro, also known as Insert or Overwrite Nests or Sequences. I'll show you in a second. All right, Angus Wall. Fantastic editor. You may know him from editing a lot of David Fincher's movies, uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Social Network, and on and on. Anyway, Adobe worked closely with David Fincher's crew and made sure that Adobe Premiere Pro did the things that they wanted to do. Actually, they had engineers that would camp out in their offices and actually change and update Premiere Pro at their whim. And one of the features uh, that Angus called Virtual Chem, which is based on Chem Studio Technique, a German company that created a multi-track tape-based um, editing bay uh, way back in the 70s. Anyway, the idea is this, and uh, this also came from a conversation I had with someone who was trying to answer someone else's tutorial about Final Cut Pro X and where they're saying that Premiere Pro can't do this, can't do that, can't do... Obviously that person had no understanding of the power of what you can do and why this feature is important. Let's go have a look. I'm going to start by taking a segment of this very busy timeline and creating a subsequence. So to do that, I'm gonna hit my in point and I'm gonna hit my out point just on an arbitrary uh, position here. And now I've marked this area and I'm going to turn all of my track targets on. An easy way to do that is if you hold the shift key down and tap in here, you'll turn all of these on. What I wanna do is I wanna show a subsequence with a lot of stuff in it, a complicated subsequence, okay? So once I have that marked out, I'm going to create a subsequence and here it is over there, and I'll just call this sub. And if I double click on this, that's what it is. And I'm also gonna make my tracks smaller. I'm just holding the uh, shift key down and using my scroll wheel and show you how busy this timeline is. So there's lots of stuff going on in this timeline. And what I wanna do is I wanna work with either nested sequences or clips. And here's the easy thing to miss. Sometimes you want to nest, sometimes you don't. And if you don't understand this feature and why it's so powerful, and why Angus wanted it, you're missing a giant part of the power of Premiere Pro. Now, this is for only some people. Honestly, I almost never use uh, subsequences at all. But for some people, this will be important. Okay, so right now I have uh, no sequence created for this sub to put in. So I'm just gonna create a new sequence and I'm going to actually pick a sequence. And what I wanna do is I'm, I'm gonna show you this in stereo and then I'm gonna show it to you as a multi-channel. So let's call this sequence stereo. All right, so remember this is my sub sequence and this is the new sequence that I have with nothing in it. One of the things I, I want to explain is the idea of source and, and track targets, because this is also important. You'll notice that when I click on some of these, there will be indicators on the left-hand side. This is the subsequence that is stereo, and you'll see I get V1 and A1 selected. If I drag this sequence in, it's a typical nested sequence. Now I'm gonna get a warning that it's a mismatch, but uh, I'm just gonna keep my settings the way they are right now. So this is the same amount of information, it's just represented in a different way. Right now it's represented as a nest. And if you double click on a nest, it takes you to that nest. Make a change in here and it changes in here. Okay, that's not new. That's the default, and that's the way most people will probably understand working with nests. But what Angus wanted was, sometimes he doesn't want the nest, sometimes he wants the pieces from that sequence to come in. 
that's where this button shows up right here. And it's got a pretty long name. Insert and override sequences, this is the important part, as nests or as individual clips. So I had this engaged, it's blue, when I brought this in. Well, now I'll delete this, I'll turn this off, and look what happens over here in my source patching. It knows because I have this sequence selected, which has a lot of stuff in it, all of these turn on. Now when I drag this in, look at that. All the pieces come in at the same time as individual pieces that are not part of the nest. Remember before when I double clicked and I went to the nest, if I edit the nest, the nest is in a new sequence, the edit in the nest will update here. That's not what will happen here. This is the equivalent of you going in and marking a point, selecting all, copying, creating a new sequence and dropping it in. But it was done because I turned this one uh, button on and off. This was huge and, and to Angus, this was a showstopper for him in the way that he edits feature films, which are infinitely more complex than what I edit. So, What's this thing about stereo? Okay, so the master setting of that, that subsequence, if we go and look down here at the bottom, let me just drag this up. You'll see our master is stereo. That's what these two little icons mean here. And if you go to the sequence settings for that sequence, you'll see it's stereo. You can't change this. When a sequence is set to stereo, it's stereo. When it's set to multi-channel, you can change how many tracks, but you can't change it to and from stereo. So I'm gonna go back and create another sequence. Again, I'll load it from the original. This time, instead of stereo, I'll choose multi-channel and choose 32 and click OK. And now if we look down here at the bottom, um, oh, by the way, I'm just going to delete all the empty tracks. You'll see now in my master setting, this is 32, but I can change it to eight and I can change it to 32. Very easy. Remember we made this subsequence um, out of this sequence. This is stereo, this is stereo, and this sequence, I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna call this one 32. So that's our 32 channel, and that's our stereo sequence. I told you we can't change that, but if we, actually I can just duplicate this, and let's call this master. All right. So here's what I'm getting at. Let me delete all these tracks. Delete all the empty tracks. Okay, stereo 32. Here's my subsequence, which is now 32. You'll notice that You'll notice that when I drag it in, I can't put the audio on the standard track. It's actually gonna make a new track down here at the bottom. And if we open this up, you'll see it's 32 and the master is 32. Although it doesn't look like it here, if you keep zooming in and I'm using the scroll wheel, eventually all 32 channels show up in that sequence. That's what I'm trying to show you. On the simplest form, you input a sequence as a nest or as clips. Okay, great. But what if I've got a lot of complex audio in here? What if I need multiple channels out of that audio? I just showed you as long as the subsequence was created with multi channels, then you're okay. And if it isn't, you just make a new sequence, drag this in as clips, make sure the new sequence has 32 or 16 or eight or whatever, then you can drag this into another sequence as long as you start with multi-channel. And here's the other important thing to remember here. I told you before that this, the master can be changed. So if I change this to eight, you'll notice that that multi-channel track is now eight. You notice that this there are four different kinds of tracks. An adaptive track, that's what this is. This is an adaptive track with multi-channels. 
All right, so there you go. The virtual cam from Angus Wall, the feature that he asked for in Premiere Pro. It's got everything the naysayers say that you can't do with sequences and subsequences and multi-channel and all of that mapping all over the place. It's incredibly powerful. All right, hopefully you found this informative. Um, and it, if you have, then great. And if you're new to, print, to Video Revealed, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to take your support up in a level, join us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.